This is my current workbench and outfeed table for my table saw. Eh, it's okay, but there's a lot of things about it that I don't really like. It's not as big and bulky as traditional woodworking benches, there's no drawers or trays, and it'd be nice if it had integrated power. But my number one pet peeve with this bench is how dust is always falling down the dog holes and literally covering everything I put underneath it. I don't know why they drilled so many dang dog holes in this stupid thing. There's gotta be like a thousand of them. Maybe they're trying to save on shipping. Anyway, I designed this bench, which should be perfect for my little shop. It's roughly the same size as the other one, but the sides can fold up so that you can extend your work surface to just over 90 inches long, which will be awesome. There's a couple trays that'll catch all the dust and will be a good place to put frequently used tools. And I was thinking I could integrate a power outlet into the front leg. This is gonna be a massive project, but this is just the upgrade that my little shop needs. Okay, let's see how bad I can screw this thing up. My neighbor gifted me all these wonderful black walnut slabs so that I could build a bunch of epoxy river tables for them. But since the last thing that this world needs is another epoxy river table, I decided it would be more fun to build my workbench out of all of them. So that's what we're gonna do. And since I'm definitely gonna need some help with this project, the awesome folks over at Bessie said they'd be ready and willing to pitch in where needed, which is fantastic. Thanks, Bessie. Well, the first thing I needed to do was to get these big slabs down to a more manageable size. And to do that, I just measured out the length I'd need, clamped it down, and cut it in half with my jigsaw. Next up, I could use these handy little guys to clamp my track down, and then I zipped a straight line down one side of the slab with my track saw. The blade couldn't quite reach all the way through the slab though, so I had to finish things out with a pole saw. I removed the rest with a trim router, and then I could slice the rest of it up on the table saw. Then using my joiner, I could get one of the faces flat on each of the pieces. Then referencing that flat face, I could flip each one upside down and then flatten the other face using the planer. One of the edges got squared up over on the joiner. And then I could start pulling down some clamps so that I could begin to glue up what will be the legs. I wanted to do this before I brought the boards to their final thickness because I knew I'd never get them perfectly lined up in the clamps. This way, once they're dry, I can mill them the rest of the way down and have them at the perfect size. Then the clamps can come off. Perfect. And at this point, I could resume my milling and flatten out the glue seam of each of the legs, getting each one down to its final thickness. And then I have a set of perfectly sized legs. Now it was a matter of cutting each of them to their final lengths. For that, I just set up my extension wings on my miter station and used a stop lock to make a bunch of repeatable cuts. Now I can lay out where all the dados need to be cut. I just use my 123 blocks to quickly and easily get things marked out on the first leg. Then it was just a matter of setting up a stop lock and making the cuts. A quick test fit to make sure I measure things right, and then I can go ahead and cut all the rest of them. And then, just like when I'm at the pool, you can see that I have a weird looking set of legs. The last of their pieces got their fourth face cut on the table saw, and there you have it, a bunch of perfectly square, solid black walnut boards. Then to make sure each of them ended up at exactly the same length, I lashed all of them together with painter's tape. I heaved them over to my miter station, and then I cut them all at once. Mm -hmm. 
At this point, I tried dry fitting the pieces together, and since things were looking good, I went ahead and I squirted on some glue. Now this glue up is pretty straightforward. Just smear a bunch of glue on all the faces of the dado, drop it in the stretcher, check if it's square, clamp it down, and then panic and check if it's square again. Once all the stretchers dried into the legs, I felt that it would be a good idea to add some reinforcement screws. But instead of simply countersinking the screws or hiding the holes, I thought that this would be a good opportunity for me to do something completely unnecessary and inlay some high contrasting maple plugs. I counterbored, pre-drilled, and drove in the screws first. Then over at the drill press, I used a plug cutter to make a whole bunch of these little guys. I just snapped them out of their holes, put a little glue on them, and twisted them into their new homes. Then, once they were all nice and settled in, I could saw their heads off and then sand everything smooth. Yeah, I think that looks pretty sharp. Now that the two big pieces of the bench frame are complete, we can join them together by gluing in the cross braces. Later, once it had dried, I could lift it down and then glue in the center cross brace. When that piece set up, I could remove the clamp and then reinforce it the same way that I did all the stretchers in the legs. One more brace goes right on top of this one so that we can split the area into two sections. Then that pretty much wraps up the main part of the frame. Now I can move on to making the little fold out parts. I start out by ripping down some square stock and then cutting them all to length. All these pieces connect with half laps, so I cut those into each end of the pieces and then I can glue each of the assemblies together. Once they're dry, the clamps can come off. And then I can pretend to be a real woodworker and actually use a hand tool to smooth out the half lap joints and to remove some burns from the table saw. Next up was inlaying the continuous hinge into each one of the support frames. I just traced the hinge and then hogged out the majority of this with the router. And then finished it out with the chisel. When I had it fitting perfectly, I could then drill some mounting holes and then get the hinge fastened on. Each support frame gets a floor leveler installed upside down on the top corner. For this, I just drilled a hole, twisted in the threaded insert, and then screwed in the leveler. Then on the bottom of each frame, a stem caster gets installed. I make some indentations from a T-nut and then I drill them out. Then I just hammer it into place and screw in the caster. The last thing to do with each of these support frames is to get them mounted onto the sides of the main bench frame. And then I can check it out for the first time. <laughs> it's gonna work. Next, I show you a very advanced woodworking skill set where I can power on the table saw with my foot. Then I proceed to cut out all the plywood pieces that I'll use to make the two trays. Now since that can be a bit much sometimes, I decided to go ahead and glue on some walnut edge banding that I made. And then when all the little strips had dried onto the plywood edges, I could remove all the clamps. A flush trim bit in the router zipped off all the excess, and then I could trim them to length over at the miter saw. Now to put these on, I didn't do anything special, just glue and some brad nails. 
But for the front and back, I stepped over the unnecessary line again, and I decided to make them out of walnut. And each of these pieces has a unique shape to them. This is so you can still use a traditional style clamp along the front and back edges of the bench to clamp something down without hitting the trays. I'll show you more about this later. So to cut this shape out, I glued on a temporary fence, and then I used a bandsaw to take off the bulk of the material. Then all the rest over at the router table. Afterwards, I could just pry off the temporary fences and I'm left with my finished piece. Now to attach these pieces, I just used a liberal amount of glue, but then I also reinforced the sides with some screws. Next, the rails could go onto each one. I just marked a center line, spotted it through the mounting holes, and then fastened it on. And yes, I had to get at least one flathead screw in there for all my haters. For the drawer slides, I just spaced them up a touch and then fastened them onto the upper cross braces of the bench frame. Now, I thought it would be nice to have a power outlet integrated into the bench. Now, I don't need an entire power strip full of plugs since I only ever use one tool at a time, so I figured a single small flanged outlet could be inlaid into the front of one of the bench legs. I used a Forstner bit to drill out a hole for the outlet, and then I had to use a router and the accuracy of a brain surgeon to carefully make the mortise for the flange. Oh, perfect. Yes. The last step for the bench frame was to pre-drill all the bench mounting locations. Once this was knocked out, I could turn my focus into making the bench surfaces. And for these, I picked up a bunch of rough cut hard maple boards. One thing I like to do is to use my moisture meter and double check and make sure each piece is thoroughly dry and ready to be milled before I just dig in. This keeps me from having any unexpected movement when everything is finished. It's usually the reason why I stay away from spicy foods as well. Each piece got cut to length, jointed, planed, thicknessed, and cut to final dimensions. And after a marathon session, I had all the pieces cut and ready to go. Since my planer can only accept 13 inch wide pieces, I had to glue up each bench top in two sections. And for each one, I made sure to use calls as well as a ridiculous amount of clamps. When it had thoroughly dried, I could remove those clamps. and proceed to give myself a series of hernias while I manhandled this beast through the planer a bunch of times to get it down to its final thickness. The table saw let me put a clean edge on both sections, and then I scribbled down some locations where I could use my biscuit joiner. When putting these two pieces together, I kind of overdid it with the glue, and then I squished in a handful of biscuits down into each of the slots. Then it was into the clamps to dry. Afterwards, all the clamps came off, And it was time to trim the sides square. With the ends of the bench trimmed, I could cut it down to its final width back over at the table saw. Okay, 
So to join the smaller bench tops to the big one, I got some heavy duty ball bearing hinges that were meant for really big doors and I wanted to inlay them into the bottoms of the bench surfaces because, well, I'm fancy like that. So I used a router and some chisels to cut a mortise for each one of the four hinges. Once I had them all fitting perfectly, I could pre-drill and drive in all the mounting screws to fasten the three bench surfaces together. Now I could map out everywhere that I wanted to have dog holes on my bench. When I had it all laid out and looking good on the bench surfaces, I went ahead and I punched a starter hole at each location. Then with the help of a drill guide, I was able to cut perfectly straight and perpendicular 3 quarter inch holes at each of the locations. I had the bench top propped up and a piece of scrap wood underneath so that I would get a real clean hole with no blowout. And this is yet another reason to avoid spicy foods. I chamfered each of the dog holes to help mitigate tear out and then I was finally ready to get the old bench out of the shop. The new one got scooted into position and then I could very carefully maneuver the bench top assembly into place, trying my hardest not to crush my fingers in the process. I drove in some long 4 inch screws to fasten the surfaces down to the frame and then I could use a set of wire cutters to instantly destroy a brand new extension cord. I stripped the ends of the wires, fished it through the hole in the leg, and then wired on the outlet, putting the black wire to the brass screw and the white to the silver. Once I had it all screwed into the leg and the cord routed and out of the way, I could plug it in and give it a test drive. Nice. All right. Time to put some finish on this thing. I'm using a simple Danish oil because it's really easy to apply. It brings out the beautiful rich tones of the walnut. It'll keep drips of glue from adhering. It cures to a water resistant satin finish. Plus, it's food safe. So if I wanted, I could eat some spicy food right off of the bench top. Well, there it is. Check it out. Man, it turned out absolutely gorgeous. I love the walnut frame mixed with those maple plugs. It's just such a cool accent. The bench top turned out amazing, and I really like that there's a lot fewer dog holes. The integrated power will be super handy, and the trays will keep things tidy as well as be a convenient place for small tools. And once I lift up the extensions on both ends, the bench really transforms into a massive work surface. It's going to be so nice having all this extra space. So let me show you why I designed the bench this way. Bessie makes these ratcheting dog hole clamps that have an extended adapter so they work really well with this kind of wooden bench top. Adjustable to various heights and super easy to use. Holds things down real well and releases with the press of the trigger. They also make this variation which allows you to really crank down on the clamp to lock things in a place if you need to. Both of these clamps are awesome and they work so well for work holding. So with these clamps, not only can you use them on the bench top, but you can also use them on the vertical side extensions to clamp something sideways. Plus, since the whole front of the bench is coplanar, you can even use them to secure boards flat against the front for when working with longer pieces. And even if those clamps aren't your thing, the bench edge is exposed in a way where you can still easily use traditional style clamps. So that's it. I can't begin to tell you how much I love it. It's such a huge upgrade to my shop. Not only is it super functional, it's extremely versatile and it can be used in many different ways. It already has a ton of features. However, I plan on making it even better. I want to fill out the lower area with some much needed storage. So look for that in another video. If you're in need of a new workbench and you'd like to try your hand at making this one, I have very detailed step-by-step -step instructions available for this project over on my website at fishersshoponline.com. Thanks so much to Bessie for sponsoring the video too. I'll have links to all the various clamps I used of theirs throughout the entire project in the video description below. 
Hey, thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Who made this thing? Oh, it broke my shroud! You jerk! My pants are ringing. Oh. Hello? Oh, I just realized. I did this on the wrong side. Oh wow, I'm really stupid. This is where the caster goes, not the foot. Oh no! Oh, shattered my bit. Well, that's unfortunate. Ooh, about wet my pants. That could have been really bad. Yeah. He almost knocked the camera over. Were you filming? Yeah. Oh, that's a problem. Oh no. All right, let's try that. Come on. Oh, it's turning. Gosh, I've defeated you. turned a Phillips screw into a flathead screw and it solved the problem. Remember that.